live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is Jeff Frick. You're watching The Cube. We're live at the Splunk.com 2014 conference, the fifth annual Splunk user conference at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. It's our third year bringing The Cube here. We love coming to this show. We get to talk to more practitioners than probably any other show that we do all year. Joining this next segment by my co-host, Jeff Kelly. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'm Jeff Kelly from Wikibon. So we're joined by Aaron Fulkerson. He's the founder and CEO of a company called MindTouch. Aaron, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. So Aaron, tell us a little bit about MindTouch. We were talking a little bit uh, before we went on air, but uh, for our audience who may not be familiar with you guys, what, uh, what is it you do? Yeah, happy to. Always happy to talk about MindTouch. So uh, MindTouch provides a self-service customer success platform that our buyers capture their product information, their customer support documentation, and then deliver it out to their customers and their support agents. Uh, we analyze the, the behaviors of their users and agents and optimize the organization of the content and then deliver back to our buyers customer insights that help them to close their customers faster and make their customers more successful. Okay, so customer success platform. Could you give, maybe add a little color, maybe walk us through a typical use case? Sure, let's say you're blackboard.com or Salesforce or SAP. Mm -hmm. You've got all of this content floating around your organization, whether it's your customer support knowledge base or your product documentation, training materials. So what our buyers do is centralize all of that help content, if you want to call it that, or what we call customer success content, into a central place that then wires up into your in-product help system, provides a web, uh, experience for getting your customers ramped up quickly on your product, turns them into product experts, brand advocates, and in the background, MindTouch is analyzing everybody's behavior, optimizing the content to be more effective, mm -hmm. and then providing insights to our buyers so that they can close customers faster okay. and make their customers more successful. So helping them get the most value from all that great content that they've created. Right. You know, a lot of that content was floating around as PDFs and files that when people go to the Google and start looking for uh, vendor selection in a particular vertical, they're not going to find it. So just by converting it into a web native environment mm -hmm. in MindTouch, it also tends to double their organic site traffic. Typically within the first two quarters of launching MindTouch, their organic site traffic increases by 50%, by the end of the year it doubles. And these are prospective buyers that are going online and looking to make a purchasing decision because we already know that 57% of buyers make up their mind before they ever talk to the vendor. So MindTouch helps with that. Great, so uh, talk a little bit about Splunk and how they're helping you do that. So you mentioned you're, you're helping, you're doing the analytics to actually kind of feed that back into your, your customer base and give them advice on better ways they can use their content. Well, we store a lot of like user event data, but we're not presenting or um, presenting that information. And then mm -hmm. we also do optimization, right? But we're not an analytics system. We're more of a content platform, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, what Splunk does for us is, we, we were a Splunk Enterprise customer for a couple of years. And then at the beginning of this year, we moved to Splunk, Splunk Cloud. And uh, when we went through the process of evaluating uh, for vendors in the marketplace, my team went out and looked at about eight or nine different vendors. This is everybody from open source solutions to Sumo Logic, Librato, all these other vendors in the space. And um, we went through a three month period of a bake off and proof of concept, and Splunk Cloud was the clear winner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll, I'll get into some of those details in a second, but the key things that we saw. Uh, well, I should mention that Splunk Cloud actually delivers information to our entire company. You go into our cafe at our office and uh, you know, there's Splunk on the wall, right? Our customers are accessing information from Splunk about their usage of our product. So they can see how people are accessing information from MindTouch across all of the channels. Mm -hmm. uh, so really, Splunk impacts every single department in our company. Mm -hmm. So you're not only using it internally, you're, you're exposing it to your customers as well. Yeah, that's correct. It's, also, it's, it's a critical asset for our customer success account management team. We can spot trends and then move quickly to get our customers ramped up more quickly on our product. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, for we, we're a cloud-based, we're SaaS, right? We ship code every week. And when we push out a release every week, we maintain 100% uptime, just like Splunk Cloud does. And um, what, what Splunk Cloud allows us to do is to stay in front of any bottlenecks or problems that we have with our own product shipping the code. Yeah, well, so, well, let's go. I do want to ask why you made this shift from the enterprise on-premise version to the cloud version, but let's even go back further than that. When you first came to, uh, you mentioned kind of evaluating 
uh, all the vendors in the market when you look to the cloud solution, but let's go back even further to when you initially started using Splunk. How did that come about? And maybe if you could walk us through a kind of before and after um, scenario. Sure. Well, you know, I'm not going to be able to get into all of the details since uh, my role is not cloud ops or DevOps, but um, I'll tell you that my cloud ops and DevOps team was using Splunk Enterprise for a couple of years before we moved to cloud. What we were looking for as a solution was something that we could provide real-time monitoring. Real-time monitoring for our customers, our customer success team, uh, our product team to make decisions about how to develop the product and the product roadmap. And then first and foremost, and this was the really immediate need was, hey, we've got to make sure that we've got a system in place that can allow us to spot trends as we ship code every single week to our almost 1,000 customers mm -hmm. on our cloud What's interesting though is you, you did a fresh eval on, on Splunk Cloud as opposed to just looking at, at the cloud yep. as an alternative delivery yeah. for, for consuming the application. Yeah, we don't want to have to maintain servers. You know, we're not, if, like, I, like we talk about at MindTouch, look, we're not going to do it if it's not something we can be best in the world at, and maintaining infrastructure and servers isn't something I'm interested in being best in the world right, at. Right, right. But it implies, though, a significant uh, increase in the applications and the use of the tool is because you could have easily just done what you were doing before without running through a, a vendor review process or a POC yeah. and just flip that into a cloud delivery model. So, so clearly, why? You know, what was the driver behind the expanded use that forced you to go through the uh, the vendor evaluation? Yeah, process? great question. So. We, we were approaching it with fresh eyes, right? We said, okay, look, we've got these requirements. One of those requirements was that we have a vendor that's cloud-based, right? Uh, and at that time, when we first begun the valuation, uh, Splunk Cloud, I think, was just announced, right? So this was the Q1 of this year, of 2014. So uh, it was just announced, I believe, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So we said, look, we're not going to, this is so critical, we're going to be living with this for probably the next five years and we're going to be building out critical strategic parts of our business based on this asset. So we wanted to make the right decision. So that's why we went out, we sourced, the total list was 10, we shortlisted about five or six, we did some POCs with about four or five of those five or six. And uh, like I said, it was, it was a big winner. Um, a lot of the things that we ran into was uh, a lack of reliability, laugh, lack of guaranteed uptime. Mm -hmm. um, another key thing that we saw was a lot of the, um, the vendors couldn't even handle the scale of content that we were pushing into them. They weren't slow, they weren't performant. Uh, the, another key thing during the evaluation process was the Splunk team. During the sales cycle, after the sales cycle, everybody here at Comp knows this, they're incredible, they're fanatical about customer success, just like MindTouch is. So they were really helpful in making sure we got the information we needed mm -hmm. and uh, were able to get up and running quickly. Mm -hmm. Now what role did the um, licensing structure of a cloud uh, product versus an on-premise product. I mean, I'm not sure um, how you know how what your license model was like on-premise, but I know that you know Splunk is moving from the kind of the perpetual license model to a hybrid where it's also perpetual and subscription. Mm -hmm. Certainly, when you're in the cloud, that's one of the benefits is that subscription model. What role did that play in sort of terms of your decision making to go to the cloud? I don't think that the uh, subscription. Uh you know, the, the, the operational expense was as much a consideration as that we didn't operationally have to maintain mm -hmm. the infrastructure, right? That was the bigger consideration in it. Uh, but as far as what we saw in the landscape among all of the products that we saw out there, uh, it was very competitively priced. You know, that was one of the key things that we did see during the evaluation process. Mm -hmm. Now, we've heard from uh, a number of Splunk customers over the last couple of days about uh, their use of Splunk and how it kind of comparing it to the old world of the EDW space, the BI space, and we saw Godfrey Sullivan talk about this in the keynote yesterday, kind of comparing the old with the new. Um, how is that, you know, we're seeing, you know, not just Splunk, other tools in the so-called big data area start to encroach upon that traditional data warehouse environment those in that market. How is that playing out in your organization? Uh, you know, we, we've, we've got a big data store that we're storing all these user events from our customers and their customers customers, that's awkward to say, uh, that we, we need to be able to provide a way to analyze for our buyers. And um, it's certainly, a, 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 obviously, a pretty important trend taking place. The thing I've noticed about the landscape is people tend to be very highly specialized in specific use cases. Uh, obviously, that's where Splunk started. But you know these guys are clearly the leaders, and their vision, as you've seen at the show, the keynote, 
is uh, really, it's, it's leading the way, it's paving the way. And you see them really making some big moves into providing more decision-making tools and business intelligence and moving out of just the pure IT management space and log processing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's clear they have, Splunk has big ambitions. They're, they don't want to be just that, you know, with log data analysis company. They yeah. are looking to be more of a, I think, the way they put it, analytics everywhere. They want to be that analytics layer. And so Splunk may not necessarily want to, that doesn't necessarily talk about it, but it seems to me that they're going to increasingly encroach on the more traditional BI space. I think that's, there's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, there's, uh, within MindTouch, that's precisely how we're using them as well. You know, we're using them for both business intelligence as well as uh, DevOps, CloudOps management, mm -hmm. and helping us to ship code, right? I mean, I, I look at reports from Splunk as the CEO. Uh, our product team, our product vision is based on information that we pull out of Splunk data. Uh, and reports, so absolutely that's clearly what the uh, future is for this company and already they're doing that. I think that it's probably being, uh, you know, perhaps perhaps as of this event things are going to be changing, but it's probably been underreported in how effective their tool is for providing decision making inside the C-suite. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, again, you think of um, the log analysis as kind of the sweet spot, but clearly they're, they're expanding that to other areas. and. Um, you know, people ask me the question, is Splunk a tools company or a platform company? And I think it's clearly the latter at this point. Yes. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, one of the areas that we've heard about here at the show was the uh, application development of customers of Splunk. So they're doing their own kind of application development. So you've got applications that Splunk builds on its platform, but you've also got their customers doing their own kind of custom application development. Um, is that something you guys do, or do you use kind of the application that Splunk offers themselves? And how do you view that? Is that an important, was that an important criteria when you were looking at um, the tools out there? Yeah, it was. Um, we wanted to minimize how much customization we had to do on the product, but there was some custom application development that was required because, of course, we're a SaaS company and we had to fit our product into the framework that Splunk provide, but it was the easiest offering for us to do that with. Um, the, some of the key things that we've seen is we, we fired up Splunk Cloud and started um, uh, tuning our performance back in, you know, what was it, March-ish, somewhere around there. And um, our, our baseline response time for our application was about 250 milliseconds, which is pretty darn good, right? Uh, since then, um, with the help of Splunk, we've actually gotten that down to 50 milliseconds baseline response. Uh, wow. So screaming fast, and uh, Splunk was a critical asset in helping us to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, you said you're not in the DevOps side in terms of writing the code, but you're using, it's almost like a DevOps methodology in terms of the feedback loop and this constant monitoring feedback. I wonder if you could talk about, you know, you said you've got a dashboard, you're watching it, how the ability to push that information down within your people um, has enabled them to do their jobs better and to deliver a better service to your customer. We talked a little bit earlier, you know, going from you know, kind of break fix to proactive to predictive and kind of moving down this journey of really getting ahead of the curve on the, on yeah, the data. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you've really nailed what our focus is, is moving from that reactive break fix support to being proactive customer success. And you'll see a lot of announcements from MindTouch around predictive coming out uh, in the coming weeks and next year too. But um, uh, to your point, I think the most interesting thing is how our buyers use the data and reports from Splunk, because what they're able to do is to track what we call a help request. A help request is a unique unit of measurement delivered to a customer or agent. So everything we do tries to be consistently value-based for our buyers, right? So we want to demonstrate that value. Splunk helps us do that. Not only can our customers track each help request that they're delivering to their users, but you can track it by the channel that they're delivering it. So is it is it the website for the web-based success center? Is it the in-product application help system that MindTouch is powering? Is it inside the case management, the contact center, the chat? And then they can make decisions, you can drill into that and make decisions specific about, well, what are the kinds of content that they're accessing uh, in, in those channels, by channel, and then make better decisions about, well, look, these, this persona, that persona, here's how we make changes to give them a better experience. Right, and I wonder if you can, if you can tell any stories about some of your customers and, and you know, some of the 10x uh, impacts that they found uh, in delivering their services by, by using this. Surprises, um, you know, had no idea, either something we thought was really valuable and was not versus something that we had no idea was delivering such value. What if you could share a couple stories? Sure, I can think of uh, one particular manufacturer that's a 200 year old company that didn't realize how quickly their consumer base was, uh, was becoming young, right, was becoming digital. So they had specific beliefs about, well, you know, look, our customers, uh, they're, they're more print guys, right? 
Uh, and what they learned with the help of MindTouch and Splunk was that's not true at all. Uh, they're way, they were previously way behind the curve in delivering the kind of content that their user base was expecting in a digital format. Another key thing that we've seen internally at MindTouch is we've tripled our customer base and maintain the same headcount in our DevOps and CloudOps. So we've tripled our customer base. We've actually more than uh, 20x increased the, the, the um, load on our infrastructure, and we're still shipping code every week, and our DevOps and CloudOps team has stayed the same. And that's and, Splunk. And on that story, what, what was the trigger? The, the consumption of the digital assets? The not consumption of the PDFs? I mean, what? Yeah, so going back to the customer yeah, example, just, just uh, they could actually deeper. track, is it coming in through the contact center? Okay. Right, people picking up the phone? Is it coming in through the various websites? Uh, another key thing that uh, we've been able to do is actually accurately track deflection for our buyers. And this is another example with this customer. Oh, look, our customers are more print people. They're not going to access information online. They prefer to be on the phone. And uh, with the help of Splunk, we've been able to show, actually, your customers are showing a specific preference to these channels online. And by the way, here's how we've saved you money by helping you to prevent them from having to call in. Yeah. Um, so Aaron, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the culture in your organization around making data-driven decisions. Um, it sounds like, I mean, it's pretty central to your core value proposition. Uh, but you know, that's not the case for all enterprises. But I wonder from your perspective as CEO, how important is kind of the, having that top-down mandate that the CEO is on board with, look, we need to be more data-driven to spur your workforce, your employees to really focus their decision-making around data? Yeah, I think uh, you know everything we do at MindTouch, um, we do conscientiously having the ability to review a lot of um, information and uh, actually do an impact study and here's what our expected ROI is. Um, you know, we're a SaaS company and uh, there's certain metrics that we monitor as a SaaS company. I know that, look, if I spend any dollar, I want to see that come back in my pipe in six months or 12 months, depending upon the investment. But, you know, everything from marketing to how we manage our customer success or account management, uh, it's, it's entirely data driven. Uh, one key way that I can think of is uh, when it comes to how we invest in our product, we can see where people are, what, which aspects of our product our customer base and their users are putting on our product, and that informs all of our product roadmap decisions. Uh, so across the board, we're able to take a deep look into how our buyers and their users are accessing our application and our platform across the channels, and then, hey, look, here's where we need to make investments to improve things. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you mentioned you know, that you haven't had to expand headcount uh, from the application developers, but when you, you, know, when you are doing new hiring, how important is that, um, th their data IQ, if you will, uh, when you're hiring, whether it's developers or anybody else in your organization, that they have that kind of mindset? Yeah, I mean, there's a, we've certainly been hiring a lot of developers, uh, and we are actively, but the DevOps, the Cloud Ops team, uh, they're, they're very, you know, these guys, before Splunk, they were basically looking at the matrix, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't even know how you guys are keeping this infrastructure <laughs> running, uh, because they're literally looking at just things going through <laughs> the screen. Um, and uh, with Splunk, you know, they're, they're, they've, They've, uh, they've always been data-driven, but they can just be a lot smarter with where they apply their time, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, uh, as far as the, the, the uh, individual software engineers, look, what we care about them is, is uh, being inspired, passionate, and innovating. It's the product managers that we expect to be really focused on being data-driven. Mm -hmm. um, so, let's talk about you know, what you'd like to see from Splunk. Um, sounds like they're doing, adding a lot of value uh, to your organization, but you know, if we're here next year talking to you, what are some of the things you hope to hear from Splunk that they've worked on over the, over the 12 months leading up to that? Are there some areas that are important to you to see Splunk uh, invest in from a development perspective? Yeah, I, mean, you know, I can't think anything off the top of my head. I, I really like their vision and roadmap around driving more toward uh, business intelligence and mm -hmm. business decision-making platform. That's important to me. Uh, the individual features and things, you know, that's up to the team that's actually building things on Splunk for mm -hmm. them to be able to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, and well, and something just struck me, you mentioned earlier how important it was that they, that the, the Splunk team was really, you know, very uh, responsive to your requests, to, you know, working with you as you were doing your evaluation. So that's, you know, really hands-on customer service, essentially. And, but we know Splunk's growing tremendously. They're adding, I think they added 500 new customers last quarter. As they grow, this is not unique to Splunk, but any 
software company as they grow is going to have a challenge remaining that customer focus. Um, how do you, you know, what advice would you have to Splunk in terms of maintaining that focus? And, and do you have any concerns that that might be an area where they might lose a little bit of focus? Yeah, you know, I, I think that um, it's pretty clear that MindTouch is no uh, Coca-Cola, right? <laughs> uh, but the level of proactive customer success that they've provided our company is impressive. Uh, you know, you, during the sales cycle, you kind of expect that, uh, although they went above and beyond during the sales cycle as well. But post-sale, that's when a lot of companies just really fall off. They kind of, they don't understand that uh, software as a service isn't about hosting the application. It's about making the customer successful, right? And uh, Splunk's fanatical about that. MindTouch is fanatical about that. I don't see that going away. I think it's it's really baked into their DNA. You know, I was I was this is my first comp, right? And uh, I noticed that they have these bavuzelas. Did you see these? I did not. So when you go to register, they have these bavuzelas where people who are longtime Splunkers they have like cowbells and clackers and bavuzelas. They play for these guys. It's clear this company's got it baked into their DNA that they are passionate about their customers. I don't see that changing. Well, Aaron, thanks for stopping by. Some great, some great stories that really support the messages that we're hearing over and over in the keynotes and, and in a lot of these interviews. You know, you've got to be a data-driven organization. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Push it down to all levels of the organization. Embrace it in your own application development so that you're focusing on the stuff that's really focused on customer outcomes. And then I love that quote you just gave us. You know, SaaS is about making customers successful. It's not a delivery methodology. So. Terrific, uh, thanks for stopping by. Sounds like a great story. I'm Jeff Frick, I'm here with Jeff Kelly. We're at the fifth annual Splunk.conf 2014 in Las Vegas, Nevada. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be back with our next segment after this short break. 